Good afternoon to all. Welcome to this ep episode of uh, Lifetime Devotion, even uh, for today. Uh, today, our Bible passage is from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. Matthew 20, 1 to 16. Okay. Uh, I think even as we read Matthew 20, uh, 1 onwards, is a very familiar story about landowner and you know, the hired hands to uh, go to his vineyard to harvest grapes. I think uh, the first point that uh, we need to remember uh, is that uh, it's just a parable that Jesus shared. Okay, so I'll quickly read through the, the passage and help us to, uh, if you're not ready, just to have a basic for it. Matthew 20, verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a diner dinaris for the day and send them into his vineyard. About the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. Now, the Jewish third hour is about uh, 9 a.m., okay? They start at 6 a.m., so third hour is 9 a.m., okay? But third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour. Sixth hour is for 12 noon, and the ninth hour, 3 p.m., and did the same thing. About the 11th hour, he went out. 11th hour is 5 p.m. He went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? They answered, huh? because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his four men, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last one hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about 11 hours at 5 p.m. came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to crumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. And the landowner answered, but he answered one of them, friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for Daenerys? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? Verse 16, so the last will be first and the first will be last. Now this is a very familiar parable. We have read it before. And looking at the surface, a lot of us will think it's very unfair. Very unfair. I work all the way 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I get one denarius. The guy who from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. one hour also get one denarius. The landowner is being unfair. Okay. But before we come to that conclusion, I think we need to ask the question. Why did Jesus share this story? Why did Jesus share this story? And for that, we need to go backwards to where our brother Henry shared us yesterday, Matthew 19, about the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler who have kept all the commandments, but just asked him to go and sell all he had and give to the poor. The young man was not willing because he had great wealth. Verse 22. And the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Okay? And so just told them there's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go to the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Verse 25 in Matthew 19. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Verse 26, just look at them and says, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. 
The key verse to understanding the whole parable today rests in verse 27, chapter 19. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then is, will there be for us? So Peter said, We have left everything, all our fishing boats and all our livelihood, okay, possibly in the family, to follow Jesus. What then will there be for us? I think it's a very important question for us to understand before we can talk about the parable that Jesus said after this. Okay? Just answer in verse 28. I tell the truth at the renewal of all things at the end times. Okay? When the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. This applies uh, only to the apostles, okay? And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters, fathers or mothers or children or fields, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. And verse 30, and many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. So verse 30 here, Jesus says this word, and then, only then, Jesus goes on to say, to tell the parable. Now, we must also remember that in the writings when Matthew wrote this, okay, the Gospel of Matthew, there were no such thing as chapter and verses. This is put in much, much later by a Frenchman or all that, okay? So there's no chapter and verses, which means that if Matthew had recorded this Gospel, it goes on immediately. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. For the kingdom of heaven is the landowner. So it's just one continuous. There's no break in between. Now we've got chapter and verses, we have a break. Okay, but in, this, in those times, there's no break. So it goes on to tell about this parable. So Peter's uh, so-called command, okay, say, I have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? I think this is something for us to think through, okay? I, we all know that salvation is purely by God's grace. Salvation is free. Salvation is free. You cannot work for it and you must not work for it, okay? But after you are saved, after you have been saved by confessing your sin, accepting Christ as Lord and Savior, after you are saved, what you do is because you want to serve Jesus who have done everything for you. So our desire to do God's work, our desire to obey God, our desire to serve Jesus is because of gratitude that we have, because of the free salvation that we have received. Okay. So in this parable we talk about today, the people who are so-called employed, uh, they have no work to do. The landowner, out of his uh, desire to be able to help them, gave them work to do. So the first group at 6 a.m., they went out early to hire the people who were in the vineyard, plucking grapes most probably. They seemed to have a discussion. He agreed to pay them a denarius. Okay, A denarius is the normal wage for one day of work. One day of work. And in the time of Jesus. So it's about denarius is the normal wage for one day of work. A normal worksman pay for a day. How much a denarius work worth now? Okay. I try to check up. Uh, it varies a lot. I don't know why different places give different values. Anywhere from uh, one ringgit to about six ringgit. Okay. They talk about 0.7 USD and all that. Okay. So about one ringgit to about six ringgit, there's a fluctuation of how much one denarius is worth. Uh, okay, that uh, for those of us who are very old school, you remember the early 60s or even late 50s and all that, actually five cent can buy a lot of things. Five cent, 10 cent can buy a lot of things, but not nowadays. La. Nowadays, five cent can't even buy a sweet sometimes. Okay, but in those days, there's a lot of money. Uh, so best we can figure out one denarius may be worth about one ringgit to about six ringgit, uh, depending which which re which reference okay that you that you refer to and all that. Okay. 
So the first group that went at 6 a.m. since there was a discussion with the landowner and they agreed that they'll be paid one denarius a day for the day's work. And that's the normal wage that they will get. And they agreed to go because that's the normal wage. Okay. And then the subsequent group of people, the 9 a.m. group, the 12 noon group, okay, they don't sit behind the discussion or any pay to be received. We just told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, verse 4. And I will pay you whatever is right. I will pay you whatever is right. Uh, uh, so there's a difference. There's no promise of one denarius or not. It's up to the landowner to pay them what he thinks is right. Okay? And the same uh, uh, with the other groups as well. Just go and work. Then there's no in a way bargaining or understanding of how much they've been paid. So obviously being very human, at the end of the day, when the last worker only worked one hour, received one denarius, work will get around to all the other people. Wow, this guy got one denarius. Then the rest who came earlier will expect to earn more, will expect to be paid more. Maybe the first guy who came, 6 a.m. Say, wow, now I should get 12 denarius. Very good wage. Okay. But as he went down the line, everyone got one. Everyone got one. Until he came, this worker began to grumble because he had worked 12 hours and also only get one denarius. He complained and grumbled to the uh, landowner. It's not fair. It's not fair. Okay. I think what the landowner replied is very clear in verse 13. Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for Daenerys? Take your pay and go. I want to give to the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious? So I think if we think of the way of the world, fair and not fair, then we look at it from the worldly point. Okay, the landowners being unfair. Okay, but if you look at it from God's viewpoint, God has been very gracious to save us when we cannot save ourselves. No way can we save ourselves. And God's salvation is free for each one of us. And whatever we do and receive after that to serve Him, we should do it out of gratitude. It's not because as Peter seemed to allude to, why wow, we are serving you, uh, what is there for us? Because we serve you. What Jesus is trying to tell the, his 12 apostles and maybe others around him is that God is God. God has been very, very generous in saving you. God is very generous in blessing you. And God will take care of you. Some people, God will be blessed a bit more. Some may bless a bit less. As we talked about last, uh, yesterday, the rich young man. The rich man, young, rich young man, his stumbling block was wealth, money. And he was not willing to give up the money to follow Jesus. I think for each one of us, as I asked the, even the church staff this morning, why are we serving God? Why are we trying to obey God and do what God commands? Are we doing it expecting to be paid? Expecting to be rewarded? Or are we doing it out of love for God who has done all for us? I think that is the question. That is the question. I think that's why in chapter 19, verse 30, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And chapter 20, verse 16, the same thing is repeated. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. In God's kingdom, it don't go by our worldly standard. Our worldly standard talks about, I, pay, I work so much, I expect so much reward. I work so much, I expect so much reward. But in God's kingdom, God is a generous heavenly father. He will reward us as he deem fit. We don't see the person who only work one hour, get one denarius complaining, hey, why you pay me so much? Nobody complains that way. Only those who think they, 
they deserve more they complain i think for each one of us my challenge to you my brothers my sisters why are we serving god is it serving god just because of the reward or are we serving god out of gratitude for what god has done for us through his son jesus christ he just celebrated good friday easter sunday he died for us he rose again to give us the living hope so i just trust that you for today's discussion sharing from his word we know why we are serving god not because of the so-called monetary rewards that we can get but because we are thankful for all that god has done for you and for me i think that's important if god want to bless you more we praise god if god want to bless you a bit less can you and will you still praise god i think that's important huh? so even as we have talked about the rich young man where wealth is a stumbling block for all that god has blessed you with be thankful be thankful a lot of times when we are unhappy we compare with people who have more than us today during the staff devotion the the, the 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 question was also asked why don't we compare with people who have less than us who struggle with life much more than we are if we have that perspective i think we will live a more thankful and grateful life for god who has done all for you and for me so i just commend this verse to you and just ask that you will reflect upon it let us pray only father i just thank you lord that you have done all for each one of us they send your son to die that we may receive life and life eternal so i just pray a lot that whatever area of service that call us to serve we just thank ask lord that you give us a thankful and a grateful spirit to serve you to serve you a lot and trusting that you are a generous heavenly father that you will bless and you will protect and you will provide for all our needs big and small so i just pray a lord that we will not be people who try to serve you just to be rewarded but we will be a people who serve you and obey you and truly a lord is because we love you and we want to be obedient to you so i just thank and just praise you in your holy and matchless name. Amen.